hello guys so um welcome again to another episode on chris o i am chris and if you are joining this channel for the first time i am a graduate student at the simon fraser university and this channel is dedicated to talking about graduate school graduate education and fully funded scholarships and how to obtain fully funded scholarship to study um to go to graduate school to go for phds to go for masters and to go for any of the professional degrees one professional degrees or the, or the other so in this episode i'll be interviewing an international student from china and who is studying at a university in the united states of america in michigan so um so he will tell us his journey and how he landed a fully funded program and yes that's just that um that is that about us and please don't forget to like subscribe and share yeah so do you mind telling us your name please yeah yeah thank you yeah thank you for inviting me to this video uh i'm shalong uh i'm a Sinara second year ma student at western michigan university and uh yeah i'm doing philosophy there and uh it is a fully funded program so that's why i came to this video yeah okay thank you very much for in for that um brief introduction so what um is it like leaving your country and coming to the united states of america to study what has been your experience so far uh, i think the reason why i came here to study philosophy is because I think, well, analytic philosophy is the main area of my interest. So I would guess like studying abroad, especially in English, would be better for me to improve my philosophical skills. And that's why I come to US to study analytic philosophy. And uh, well, the experience is pretty good. My department is a good department and my cohorts are really good and nice and the faculty are really helpful. So, so far, I think everything goes well. So, yeah, it was a pretty good program. Okay, thank you very much. And so many of uh, my viewers in this channel are international students like yourself who are looking for scholarship to come to the Western world, to come to North America and sometimes even to go to Europe to study, to go to, to study, uh, to go for graduate um, studies. So, what are those things that made you to bag your fully funded scholarship, like your full, the full funding for your graduate school? What are those things you think you did that stood you out? Yeah, yeah, thank you. So, well, first, first of all, uh, I think most of the terminal MA, MA programs in philosophy in the United States are fully funded. Um, I think well, at least there are a lot of chance. There is a lot of spots for you to apply to, though may not all. But I think the most important thing for international students to get admitted to these kind of terminal MA programs is first of all, of course, to have a better, a, a pretty good writing sample in philosophy. I know it's been hard because like international students might be taught in their own language instead of English, so. I would say uh, it was really fortunate for me to have a advisor who's from abroad, studying abroad. So at that time I received a lot of English training in philosophical writing. And also it was a good thing to have a letter of a, a, a letter writer who's from the English world, English speaking world. And I have my advisor write a letter of recommendation for me uh, who graduated from a uh, university in the US, I think that matters a lot. Also, I think the last thing that really helps me to get into a program like this is I had a studying abroad experience. So back to, uh, I guess, three years ago, I had a visiting semester at Rutgers University. So that was the time where I took a lot of interesting classes, including especially more psychology. And that's when I expanded my philosophical interests uh, wildly. And then I benefited really a lot from those classes. 
in my writing sample specifically. So I think it is better to like gaining more experience in study philosophy in English will be better for me to like uh, get admitted to a good program like that. Okay, thank you very much. So what are those documents that you submitted? Oh yeah, so for the documents, normally terminal MA programs requires uh, a piece of writing sample, which is like 15, 15 uh, pages long, double space, something like that. And a statement of purpose or like called personal statement, which is just basically says your main area of interests and what drives you to specifically this, this, this programs who are you interested in working with, things like that included. And uh, one more thing, it's your CV, which includes the basic, your experiences, your coursework, and also three, normally three, or sometimes two letters of recommendation from your letter writer. Just basically say, like, you are a good, like, promising student in uh, philosophy of blah, 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 things like that. And uh, I guess lastly, it's your uh, transcript uh, from your undergrad uh, college. And uh, even if, especially for us international students, if your native, if your native language is not English, you have to take like English proficiency tests. So you have to bring the proof of the test, like your scores. Yeah. Uh, so you yeah. wrote the TOEFL exam? Or I actually, IELTS? Yeah, I actually you... took IELTS. Okay, yeah. you wrote IELTS. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I wrote IELTS, you know. I wrote IELTS, too, but not because it was required. It was after I've gotten uh, my admission and even gotten a visa. I just wrote IELTS just to pass, pass like, just to pass out time, you know. Yeah. Just yeah. to pass time. Oh, so one more thing I forget is okay. GRE test. What? GRE test? Yeah, back to, back to my time, GRE is required. But really? Right, yeah, right now, it is optional. A lot of schools change the the, the, the policy, just yeah. make it optional, like most. But back to my year, it's still required. So, okay, yeah, so, I took that. Okay, so, um, summatively, you would say you submitted a transcript, a personal statement, a writing sample, a CV, and GRE and English proficiency tests, in which you said now GRE is optional, right? Yeah, m m at least many programs are optional, but there are still some of them required. Okay, that, yeah. okay, okay, okay. Thank you very much. So, is there anything that you would like to um, conclude? Tell our my viewers, you know, about um, applying for funding. Well, I guess for, so it really depends. I think it really depends on different schools. So from that, my knowledge, which which might be wrong. I mean, for some of the schools, the funding comes from the grad school. So if that's the case, I've vaguely heard that the grad school may give you more funding based on the standardized test scores. For example, if you're really doing good in say GRE, you might get a better funding. But if the funding comes from the Department of Philosophy, I, which I think is pretty normal, especially for terminal MA programs, if that's the case, I think the writing sample is the one that plays the most important role because it is also one of the things, it is the, also the most important thing for you to get into that program. And it is also the most important thing for you to get a good fund. For example, for some schools, they don't have funding for all of the people they admitted. They only offer fundings to a couple, like three or five, things like that. But they, based on my knowledge, they may just give the funding to those who have the best writing sample or like a better writing sample among all the applicants. So I guess to have a better, to be successful in some sense in your application is to, first of all, to have a good piece of philosophical work. I mean, the best piece you could ever have in your study uh, experiences and polish it, revise it. Uh, yeah, try to get a better one if, if time allows. Yeah. Thank you very much. Um, it was um, 
so what's i'm just curious and my viewers are also curious what's like the average funding like what what's like the number what amount of money do they give like in a year to MA student in North America in the US? Well, um, from my knowledge in my year, I think, um, well, I applied to like, I guess, eight programs, MA programs that year. And based on knowledge, if I remember correctly, like five or six schools offer funding packages like 12 to 14,000 every year except for summer you may some school offers summer teaching opportunities for example like you have to teach for like they're going to give you three thousand or four thousand for each summer but except for that they offer basically um 12 to 15 or like 12 is to that enough to 000. is that enough to survive in u.s well that depends because well you might the, the programs might located in different places like for but for me western michigan uh the founding is really really uh enough for you to live there okay. so yeah okay. you don't so, have to pay for other things on your own i i mean that that depends on that depends on your living condition right if mm -hmm. you want to buy a car i mean that's really hard right but if you're just daily expenses and living expenses I mean, that's uh, fairly speaking, that's, I think the funding package could cover that part. Okay. Yeah. So are you doing any other extra work in the United States? Do you do, do any, like any other work apart from your teaching assistantship? Uh, nope. So far, no. Okay. I just okay. only, I just only, yeah, do my teaching. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. It was a nice time with you. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. That was my friend whom I met at a conference in Michigan and it was nice having him and I hope you did learn one or two things from him. He basically talked about applying to philosophy programs. For those of you who are not philosophy students, you just know, just apply it to your own situation because it is basically the same thing. If you're applying for political science, they would ask you to submit a personal statement, a writing sample, a CV, um, you submit your transcript and I think they will also require you to write GRE in the US. G writing GRE is something like peculiar to the US. In Canada, we don't write GRE. <laughs> and <laughs> we don't write GRE in Canada. So, um, yeah. So, um, you've listened to him. And please, if you do have questions, leave your questions in the comment section below. And if... Um, you need help with your application, shoot me an email or leave, um, just call my attention in the, in the comment section below. And if you do want to speak to him, I, you can also ask that in the comment section below and I will get in touch with him and connect you both. Okay. So, um, thank you very much. Please make sure to subscribe, like, and share the video to encourage the, um, the efforts. Yeah. Thank you very much. And do have a wonderful, um, day or wonderful week, depending on when you are watching the video. Yeah. Bye-bye.